Hi everyone. I'd like to uh, let everyone know how much Lisa and I appreciate uh, you letting us be involved with the Emily Whitehead Foundation Believe Ball. Uh, this is a fantastic event that uh, we're very honored to be involved with. My name is Roger and this is my wonderful wife Lisa and our son Jace. My son Jace. Wow, where do I start? He was a, uh, a wonderful, tremendous athlete as a child. Um, grew to be a, a great young man who, uh, who put a lot of people ahead of him in his, in his journey, especially. Jace was your very typical college student, enjoying life and friends until May of 2019, when he had a little change in his peripheral vision and went to an eye doctor, which led to a CT scan and an MRI. And Jason and I found ourselves inside a neurosurgeon's office where he heard our worst fear, that this was an inoperable, aggressive, terminal brainstem cancer called diffused intrinsic pontine glioma. In that moment, Jace asked one question. How long do I have to live? And a very kind doctor looked at me and Jay said, no, no, no. I hear you're the very best in Kansas City and you know, and I want to know because I'm not afraid to die, but I'm afraid not to have enough time to make an impact before I die. And that was our introduction to DIPG, ironically, on DIPG Awareness Day. It was last year at this time that Jace entered the CAR T-cell trial at Stanford University. He was the second patient at Stanford to try it. And Jace, at 21, was able to take in all of that information right along with us. Although it was hard to watch our son have to do that. He wanted to know all of it. And at the end of the day, we asked the doctors, what would you do if he were your son? And they came back and said, if it were our child, and we understood the risk that we might lose him, that this would be a tough trial, it's a go big or go home situation in this early child stage, we would do it. Because there is a chance that it could be a cure, that it could restore quality of life and reduce symptoms, while most of the combination drugs could only stabilize the tumor and hold him at bay for a while. So he did four days of depleting chemotherapy and went right into the infusion of CAR T cells. And you know, the buildup was tremendous. 30 doctors, it seemed like, in the room. <laughs> to put in just a little thing like this with 80 million cells. Yeah. At that first dose, late October, it reversed symptoms. He could walk better, his face didn't droop as much, he could hear fine, um, his sight was bit, a bit better, his smile was straight, yeah. and it made him so happy. And then by December, the middle of December, his symptoms started to progress, and pretty rapidly. And he did his second round of CAR T cell therapy in early January. And it had a tremendous impact. It reversed, he couldn't walk into the hospital when he arrived January 9th. And three weeks later, he was walking out on his own. And then he continued with his third CAR T cell treatment in March and uh, his fourth and fifth in May and June. But in January, it reduced the tumor size about 35%. And in the lower ponds, which affects the breathing and the heart rate, the really scary stuff, it reduced it almost 50%, which were numbers we've never heard of other than initial radiation in DIPG. Yep. And unfortunately, with Jace, we won't know um, because he had a brain bleed on July 1st and passed away on July 3rd, a very common occurrence in older DIPG patients. We don't know that it was related to the trial whatsoever, but what we do know, because Jace gave his greatest asset to the research, is his brain tissue showed that there were far less DIPG cells in his tissue 
than in a typical DIPG tumor. That's right. So we have full confidence that one day we will hear we whipped <laughs> the IPG. So uh -huh. that's coming soon. I really believe it. The experience that we had and the time that we got to spend together was priceless. This is something that they're getting down to science and they're learning from every single patient. But I wouldn't be afraid to try it. And I think it's important for those of us that walk this journey to say that. Um, I wish there was a perfect answer for DIPG, just I, as I know many of you wish for the types of cancer that your children face. But this is one of the best options we've had in a long time. And it's why we've been very pleased to bring together foundations to expand the trial uh, to 30 to 60 more kids in the coming year. Jace felt super passionate about that, and we are so pleased to work with the Emily Whitehead Foundation to watch that move forward. You know, CAR-T 20 years ago started to be developed and, and moved the needle forward to leukemia, where today, although not something anyone would want to have, becomes more survivable. And that's where we want this to go to. Um, Jace would want nothing more than for the friends he made in the hospital beds and across Facebook that he continued to encourage to have a chance like this for better quality of life and longer life. And that's why we support the Belief Ball and the funds you raise for childhood cancer tonight. And we thank you for those. And we also appreciate the opportunity to work with you as CAR-T moves forward in other types of cancer.